to the part in the chapter where... Um, he asks whether it's possible we'll never see his parents again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel the next paragraph is very important for parents mm -hmm. <laughs> if they ever <laughs> want to see their children again. <laughs> and that is that he states quite clearly that it's about repentance from the, from the parents' perspective. He says, in such visions, I have seen the last repentant soul of earth approach the throne while all heaven was silent in the presence of the awe-inspiring joy that by his forgiveness, that's God's, of his last sin, God was about to add the final touch to the glory of the redeemed. So here he's speaking about, really he's also alluding to, the, th the conditions under which the child will see his parents. Yes. And, and the only conditions under which the child in this case, and in every case in fact in the spirit world, will see his parents, uh, aside from there being some codependent addiction, is when the parents themselves has repented for their actions that they have perpetrated that were unloving towards the child. Mm -hmm. That's the only time, in fact, the child will feel drawn to see its parent. Yeah, at the beginning of this book, we saw um, right after Fred had passed through the mist, we actually saw an example of a mother and one or two of her children. Mm. Um, the mother had just passed and mm -hmm. the children had obviously worked through enough that they had forgiven her mm -hmm. for what happened on earth. And they actually approached her. Approached her but she herself couldn't face them. Correct, because she wasn't yet repentant. Yes. If she was repentant, she could have come to them. Yes. Yes. And, but she, and that's a very powerful demonstration, isn't it, of how even when someone has forgiven the other, mm -hmm. and even sometimes because that person has forgiven them and mm -hmm. they can love them, mm -hmm. um, that is so confronting in terms of the error that's inside of that person that they can either choose to, it can be very powerful, they can deal with the emotion, yeah. or they have to run. Yes, and, yeah. and the most do run. Yeah, That's the reality, and, that, and that's the reason why it's highly unlikely that, that this child will see his parents until his parents reach that condition of repentance. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, and if you think about it on earth, it, it, the same thing applies really. Who really wants to see a, a parent who's, who's attacked, browbeaten, been violent towards them, or even abuse them, right? Whoever wants to see that parent again until that parent would no longer perpetrate those same actions and, uh, and is also sorry for those actions that they've committed in the past. Who would want to see the parent? No one, really. If they're in the right mind, they wouldn't want to yeah. see the parent. So, so the same applies, of course, in the spirit world. And, and I think there's a big message for parents there, actually, for our parents in the, in the audience listening. And that is, if you want to see your children after they've passed and after you've passed, unless you are sorry for the things you've perpetrated towards them and you're sincerely repentant for them, it's highly unlikely you're going to see them. Mm. And, and that's a fa fact that you'll have to face at some point in your future. There are many, many billions of spirits who have passed and have passed for even tens or hundreds of years afterwards. They've never seen their children again. Yeah because they're not repentant for what they did to their own children. Yeah. And if you can't be repentant for what you did to your own child, how are you ever going to be repentant for what you did to anything else <laughs> or anybody else? Exactly. It's, you know, if your own child's uh, plight and hardship uh, doesn't trigger you somehow and connect your heart to the fact that you treated somebody badly, if your own child can't do that, then, then how is anybody else ever going to do that for you? <laughs> Yeah. And this is the reason why many of these parents who passed never see their children for many years, tens, hundreds, and sometimes thousands of years, never see yeah. them again. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's only, like I know for myself, it was actually a growth in love for me to say, I can't see my parents anymore. They're mm. treating me so unlovingly and so unkindly. And they're I not sorry for doing so, so they're going to continue it. Yeah, they're justifying it. Yeah. I wouldn't accept this behaviour from anyone, anyone else. else. So why do I keep... And it was a growth in love for me. So mm -hmm. I, until they demonstrate that from a soul perspective, that's going to change. Mm. The love of myself governs that behaviour. Yes. yes. It's... it's it's but crazy even, to think that it even should be love any other of way. the principle should guide, guide the behaviour too, yeah. though, because there is a principle involved, and the principle is if a person isn't sorry for the actions they have previously taken towards you, then it's highly likely they will continue those same actions towards you. 
And if you stay in that environment, you are assisting them to continue those same actions towards you. Yeah. So in other words, you're assisting them really to be unloving towards you. Yeah. And so there's a principle also involved. It's not just the principle of love of self, but also the principle of love of the other person. Yes. You would not allow them to continue doing this, give them the space to continue doing the same thing mm -hmm. when it's quite obvious that it's damaging to not only yourself, but also to their yeah. own soul. Yeah. So you wouldn't do it. And so there's a lot of principles involved in the reasons why it's like this in the spirit world. And it should also be like this in the f on earth. Mm. The reality is that many countries have this concept that, they, that, that when a parent has been violent towards a child, you take away the child temporarily, but the end goal is to get the child back with the parent. Why, for goodness sake? <laughs> If the parent hasn't demonstrated any for repentance yep. for their behaviour, why would you ever want that child going back to the parent? Yep. You'd, you'd not want the child to ever see the parent again, if possible, mm. just so the parent can see the, the, the badness and the evil of their own behaviour yeah. and also develop at some point some desire within themselves to change it. Yeah. So, so, you know, like my son Tristan works in this, in, in the social uh, worker industry yeah. and, and he's quite often frustrated with the fact that he's just helping the child get to have some self-esteem and get to have some self-love and self-care and then bang the child's back with the parent again and all of what was just done gets undone and lo and behold usually a few months later the parent finishes up treating the child exactly the same way as they treated the child before because mm -hmm. the parent hasn't had repentance mm -hmm. and so then the whole thing has to happen all again and by this time, the child's more hurt, more, more disappointed with the entire system. And we could avoid all of that if we had the bravery to go through the process differently. And if we had really, it's the courage to love. Yep. We wouldn't do that. Yep. But, you know, because of this family focus that we have here on Earth, we want to always get them back with their own family. And, and it's such a, s a silly concept, particularly when the family have been the ones that have harmed the, the child. Yeah, well, in that case, yeah. in that case, there, yeah, why would you put, you would never put a person in an abusive situation. No. So why and would you put a child, a child in one? Yes. Exactly, yeah. particularly uh, a child. Um, when I say a person, you never put an adult back in an abusive, an abusive situation. situation. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, many of us have to come to terms with the fact that most of uh, the parents have been abusive at one time or another. Yeah. And we do need, under God's laws in the future, we will need to come to a point of repentance about this. As and parents. As parents. Mean, and yeah. this is a great message for parents. Yeah. The only way you are going to be able to deal with your child, your relationships with your children, is to enter repentance. It's not about forgiving your child. No. It's about repenting for what you did to your child. Yeah. So forget about forgiving your child. Because yeah. many of you think forgiving your child is the way to go. No, it's repenting for what you did to your child is going to have the yeah. mo most benefit towards them. And, and we need to see that as it really is. Yes. Now, we're going to, in our assistance groups coming up, we're going to discuss what, we call, what we're going to call the repentant relationship yes. and the forgiveness relationship. Yeah. And the, re the relationships in which we need to repent and the relationships in which we, where we need to focus on forgiving. forgiving. And, and these concepts are very important for your future if you really want to engage love and also progress, but also important if you want to see your children again yes. after you've passed. Yes. Because you won't see them again if you don't enter, particularly if you've been p particularly violent or pushy or demanding uh, on your children. You won't see them for a long time until you work through these issues. Yeah. 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 It's very important. Yeah. Yeah.